Happy Monday morning. Happy Happy Monday. Monday. To Monday afternoon for most of yes. us. But it is happy Monday morning for, I'd like to say that first because we do have viewers that are in the morning. And then True. happy Monday. And then happy Thanksgiving week. Yes, big, big week. Of course, <laughs> Pastor, you'll see, is not here today. He's going to join us later on video for the devotional. Here. So, yeah, he, he's, he'll be back next week. But he's going to join us for the devotional. Big week coming up, honey. What do we have on today's show, though? On today's show, we have, of, of course, Thanksgiving. Lots of fun different things on Thanksgiving. Um, we're gonna reveal the entire new set, uh -oh. which is really, really fun. And then we're gonna talk about some facts about having dinner together, since this is Thanksgiving week, some really interesting facts about that. So that's what we have coming up. Uh, so Thanksgiving week, we put together, Stephen, our producer, put together this little video. So fun. You guys are gonna love this. But this is our question of the day. And the question for, of course, this week would be, what is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish. So think about it while you watch this. What's your favorite? Favorite side dish on Thanksgiving got to be the uh, cranberry. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Green bean casserole. Um, I never, I had never had it before I met my husband and I was so grossed out by the thought of it. And then I tried it and I think it's amazing. What comes to mind is I love uh, German cabbage, purple cabbage. That is one of my favorites. And pecan pie, the kind that you get from the recipe from the side of the Cairo syrup bottle. Mm. Yum, fabulous. I like um, cranberry sauce if it's the whole cranberries, and I like it if it has just a little bit of, of uh, orange tang to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't like the, uh, it's some type of dish that my aunt brings squash. I ain't into the squash. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a big fan of the, of the uh, dressing. You know what's overrated? Having to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Yams. Oh, gross. <laughs> that was so fun. Oh, that man. was so, so fun. Squash. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's some of the CTN yeah. personalities that's from some of the so shows fun. and some of the people that work here. But I love Derek. You saw Derek, um, who actually hosts the Gospel Voice and then is running audio for our show. But uh, I love Derek. He says, yeah, I don't like what my aunt brings. <laughs> Was it squash? Or anyway, good, good stuff. So, you know what? That's kind of a fun topic. Try that this week when you're sitting around with everybody. Um, but ask them to, think, to say things that aren't already on the table so that no one gets offended. All right, big set reveal. We've been talking about it for weeks and weeks. We've shown you little previews. So we did our own little kind of HGTV video for it. So here's a quick behind the scenes kind of timeline of what it took to create this. And we're gonna show you the rest of it in just a minute. This is the before look. This is an old set. We're getting ready to redo all of this for Christian Fitness. So we wanted you to see what it looked like beforehand before we started demo and started reconstructing the brand new Christian Fitness Studio. This can include our kitchen, our living room, interview area, and then a workout area. So this is going to be revamped, reconstructed very soon. We are redoing this set tied into Christian Fitness. It will all become a new Christian Fitness set. Day two, you saw part of day one when we started to take all this down. Now we're on day two. We just finished a show today on Love Living Life a little while ago. So now we're kind of trying to get regrouped and what is day three gonna be like? So day two is do a show on Love Living Life set and then start finishing tearing all this down. Actually, crew's coming in and taking the floor down. And then we'll empty out the whole set on the Love Living Live Christian Fitness set. We'll take all that down, box everything up, 
and then we're gonna take this set apart and it is being moved. So, hey guys, we're moving. We're actually moving. We're just moving this to there and there to that. So, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but it will, it'll make a lot of sense. So it's gonna be a lot of work, but we're super excited because we're gonna do so many amazing things and we're gonna bring in a lot of guests coming in. So this is gonna be really, really good. Day three, we're disassembling the old set. So you know how beautiful it looks on the front? We're taking you behind the scenes. This is what it looks like behind <laughs> the sets. They're just wooden flats. Since it's not a house, you know, you only have one side. So we're gonna have that thing on the back. And we were taking all the electrical down. So we have to disassemble all the electrical so we can remove these into different panels. So we're going to unscrew all these panels and take them apart separately. I've got to take all the electrical down. That's what we're in the process of doing is disassembling all the electrical. And then we're going to rerun all this once we get everything moved. So today is electrical and deconstruction day. These flats are in pieces, anywhere from four to eight feet wide. So we cover the seams with pillars and different things. So we've got to disconnect all the seams. We've got to take the pillar off to get to the seams so we can move the flats. Simple project, right? Yeah, not so much. All right, I don't know what day this is, I lost track, but it's a Saturday, you notice unshaven, wearing my paint shirt, getting ready for some construction. <laughs> but we have all the walls up finally. Now we have to fine tune the walls. We're gonna put a giant monitor on there eventually. We're gonna have to, of course, redo all the floors. And right now we're trying to play around with the Christian fitness side. What color do we do? We've got this grass because there's gonna be a field in these windows. We're gonna do a sports field stadium in those windows. We're gonna kind of tie the grass in indoors, almost like an indoor training facility. But what do we do with the back rim? Do we do colors? Do we do blue? Do we do solid grass? So Lori is trying to wrap her head around that and get that figured out. So anyway, today we're gonna to start fine tuning. We have a window to build. We've got to frame that window in. We've got to fine tune all the trim work. So a lot of starting to fine tune though. We're actually starting to actually get the vision, kind of getting starting to get excited about it. All right, we just put in another, I don't know, 14 hour day, but anyway, we're getting close. As you can see, we've got the kitchen side pretty much done, a couple tweaks to do, but we've got the monitor hung now. We're still waiting to hang our monitor here, which is gonna be our interactive video wall that we're gonna do a lot of the fun quizzes and things with. And then tonight, we laid all of the turf. As you can see, we did a little running track, super fun on the back here. So we've got our little track numbers lane one and two <laughs> and then the track of course goes around and then you've got the deeper grass in the front and um, we still have to do the windows so we're going to do a scene in those windows and we're getting close though another couple days and the set will be done we'll start premiering a lot of new segments but there you go new christian fitness love living life side of the studio
Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think I forgot how uh, much work that was. So now that you got to see the behind the scenes video, now you get to see what we did. We got the fireplace, we redid the window, but we tied all the studios in together. So we, you know, we'll go from the kitchen to the sofa to our interactive little screen here. This is where we'll do all our fun, you know, we do all the quizzes and is that in the Bible and all those things. We'll be able to do that over here. And then of course we have our Christian fitness side. And you know, something you might notice when you were watching the video, Christian fitness had the logo that we've used for a little over 15 years. And now we, in all that, we also did a new Christian Fitness bit, um, <laughs> logo. So we do have a new logo, which is really, really exciting because you'll be seeing that with all the shows. And it's, it's hiding right back here. Here. And you know, it's funny because people think, okay, so do you work out and do all those things? Yeah, we do. But the other part is when you build things like this, like all the pillars and painting and putting all that stuff together, it's a lot of exercise as well. So wear a Fitbit and then you can decide how many, you know, miles. Well, actually, I do. I yeah. wear a Fitbit and a lot of the days when we were working on the studio, we I'd get 12, 14,000 steps just because you see the size of it going back to the prop shop and back up here. So anyway, a lot of steps and a lot of action just building this. But anyway, really excited about it. We're going to be doing a lot of new things over here with the Christian Fitness side, especially starting next year. So if that's going to be your New Year's resolution to be healthier, Oh my gosh, we've got some great things in store for you for that. All right, so there you go. New set, a lot of work was put in by everybody, the whole crew. I mean, you saw they demolished, but there was a giant platform here that they took apart and Gary did a lot of the electrical and wiring. And so anyway, a lot, a lot of help on that. So thank you everybody for your help. And uh, it was an amazing, amazing, amazing time. And we're just really excited about it. All right, coming up this week, a lot of things. What's first, honey? Uh, I believe it's National Bible Week. Well, that's don't believe things, it is. You know, it is. I mean, this <laughs> week is, but that's part of you believing. It's faith, <laughs> faith, believing in the Bible and in Jesus and those things. So it is this National Bible Week this week. Um, we didn't bring a lot of information about that. So go online and look it up. Yeah, I just, I'm glad yeah. that they're actually yeah, recognizing National that. Bible they have, you know, we bring forward these weird uh, days each week. So it's nice to have they're an entire weird. week. <laughs> Well, some of them are. I mean, there's some of them. Anyway, some of them are. Parfait weird. day and That's whatever. True. True, <laughs> so anyway, it's true, nice true. to have a bi full Bible week. Yeah. Of course, if you have been living in a cave, this Thursday is Thanksgiving. So get ready. <laughs> Make your plans. Figure out where you're going to go, who you're going to have dinner with. Lori's going to talk about that in a minute. But I did want to bring this forward kind of my, you know, I always, I love history. So I wanted to bring forward a little history lesson and both houses of Congress back in 1789. I wanted to take you back a little bit on where Thanksgiving started, how Thanksgiving started, and how the country actually acknowledged it. And all the way back in 1789, both houses of Congress asked then President George Washington if he would do a Thanksgiving Day proclamation. So I'm going to read for you some of the excerpts from that proclamation. And it wasn't just Thanksgiving where they ate turkey and, you know, of course, they didn't watch football and do the things we do these days. It was actually a day of Thanksgiving and prayer. I mean, it was so biblically focused. The founding of our country, first of all, was biblically focused, but so was the first Thanksgiving Day proclamation. Listen to this. Here's some excerpts from it. Acknowledge the providence of Almighty God to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly to implore His protection and favor, a day of public Thanksgiving and prayer, with grateful hearts, the many and signal favors of Almighty God, unite in rendering unto Him our sincere and humble thanks for His kind care and protection of the people of this country, for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, for all the great and various favors which He has been pleased to confer upon us, that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. And my last one, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations and to bless them with good governments, peace and concord to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue. So those are just some excerpts. I would, I would really encourage you just do a, do a search online search and look up the Thanksgiving Day Proclamation of 1789 signed by George Washington and read the entire thing. It is amazing. I mean, basically, it's a sermon. It's a thankful prayer and sermon. And, sermon. Yeah. Um, and that's how our country was founded. That's the founder of our country, George Washington, and the First Continental Congress, um, both houses of Congress requesting that he make this a special day. So. And 
proclaiming Thanksgiving. Yeah, and thanking during, God for it. That's what that's, it's all about. So Beautiful. set aside that. some time yeah. while you're eating turkey, watching football, doing whatever, uh, playing beanbag games and things to just thank the Lord and maybe go around the table and, you know, tell each other and tell the whole families, you know, what you're thankful for. And of course, thank God for it. I think that's so important. So do it with all the family. Um, you know what? We did a survey or we actually found a survey that was done recently. Well, it's good news. And it is really good news because it, it's talking about... Um, eating together. And that's what we're doing for Thanksgiving. So a couple quick facts um, that they said 91% of parents said that their stress was less when people ate together, which I think is really important. And then 84% of adults wish that they could share a meal together. And I think if you think about sharing a meal together, especially during Thanksgiving, but throughout the year and every week, Remember how important that is for people. Eating together is a great stress reducer. You get to share, you get to talk to each other instead of just eating standing up. And a lot of people do that. They'll eat standing up. I mean, we don't do that. We'd like to sit down and actually go over the week. And I think that's very, very important. So if you think about sharing what's going on throughout the week or throughout each day, sit down and talk to each other. It does bring stress levels this, down. This, this survey was actually done by the American Heart Association. And they're saying, look, mm -hmm. it reduces your stress to actually sit down, talk about your week, talk about your day. Um, so yeah, we encourage families, get back together, start eating together, set a time. <clears throat> I know we're all busy, the children are busy, everybody's busy, but set the time aside, say, you know what, let's just sit down. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna have, as a family, we're gonna have a family dinner. Um, if you don't have family, just you and your spouse or whoever you can get, call somebody on the phone, FaceTime them and put them in the chair next to you in their, in their <laughs> That's anyway. a good idea, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Lori and, and our daughter, they talk to each other, you know, they're in the store and they have to show each other, what about this? <laughs> oh, my, oh my gosh, you might as well just be there with well, her. Well, that's just because I, I do a lot of design work for people. So sometimes <laughs> it's nice to have somebody bounce that thing off, bounce off ideas for them. So. All right, we'd love to share with you what's going on here at CTN, uh, in addition to our studio, and everything else that goes right. on. There's so many programs that we produce here. You saw earlier that little Thanksgiving um, piece that uh, Stephen did for us on the side dishes. You saw a couple of the CTN hosts in that. Jen Mallon was one of those in there. I thought she was hilarious talking about the recipe, and you have to pull it off the side. The love favorite that. pecan pies are really cute. But uh, she's got a show coming up next Monday. It airs at 5.30 a.m. Eastern and then replays again at 1 o'clock Eastern. So set your DVR or set a little reminder in your phone for next Monday at 1 o'clock to watch her program. But she had Special Arthleen guest. Rippey. Oh, my gosh. Dear, dear friend of ours, yes. Arthleen Rippey was on with her. And um, this isn't the entire show, but here's a quick little clip of that interview. Well, let's talk about media because media is one of the seven mountains that really is supposed to be and infiltrating culture. And when God called you to media, I want to hear how he called you because you were, before he called you to media, you were a gospel singer. I passed an audition to get on the day of discovery. <laughs> now, a few people will remember that. It was an original Christian television program before there were any Christian networks. Wow. It was very professionally done, the very finest uh, musicians and all. But it aired on secular stations. There was no Christian television. Right. So I knew Bob DeAndre, who's the founder of this network, and I heard he was going to start a Christian television network here. So I wrote him a little note. I said, I've got a tiny bit of experience, if I can help you. He said, you're on. So it was Herman <laughs> Bailey and Bob and I really from the very beginning wow. before there was uh, any kind of an office or any spade of dirt turned, before we had this land even. Wow. Uh, Charles Leeming, brother, wonderful, wonderful pastor, gave this land to Bob for the network. And um, so, you know, I've been with it from right beginning and seen the hand of God, just a wonderful blessing, just pouring out his blessing on this. Miracles, right? Mm -hmm. you, you've just seen miracles mm -hmm. for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. That was such a good interview. Yeah. If you haven't watched Jen Mallon's show, please tune in to watch it. She's got so many wonderful guests. Yeah. And of course, that was Arthleen Rippey, one of our close 
friends. So that was really fun to see her doing that interview, kind of crossing those together. Well, Arthlane, Arthlane did Home Keepers for decades and right. retired, and then Ben Mallon kind of picked up that mantle and continued with the show. So it was really neat to see the two of them together doing Tune that. Tune into Jen's show. Yeah. It's a it's a wonderful it's show. Called come Home. Yes, Come Home. All right, grab your Bible or grab your devotional if you have Pastor's devotional today, it's, Monday. It's Monday the 21st, so grab your devotional. Is but he... Pastor's going to read it for us. He yes. could not make it. Well, you'll see where he is. Let's just let him let him read the devotional, and then we'll follow up. What's up, Love Living Life family? Pastor James here. Hope you guys are well. Miss you. We're in New York. I don't know. Why don't you spin this? Show them the lobby. We're... I got lines. It's 25 degrees. Can you believe it? I'm ready for Florida. Anyway, listen, we had an amazing week up here. Miss all of you so much, but I'm glad we get to do the devotion today. And today's a good one. It's on answered prayer. Answered prayer. The scripture is found in Isaiah 30, 55, verse 8. It says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. God may choose to move. This is, listen to this carefully. God may choose to move in unique ways and use circumstance we wouldn't choose, that we wouldn't have chosen to use us. When he came to bring a savior to earth, he chose a virgin. That's not how we would have chosen to enact a plan to save the world, right? We value wealth in palaces. He chose a trough in his stable. We may have a chosen sword, but he chose a cross. When you pray, God absolutely answers you. Although the answer always doesn't come in the package that you think. For those of us that are control freaks, it's so difficult to watch God moving without our input because we want to figure everything out. Instead, you're forced to trust. And so, if we're looking for signs of awakening, if we're looking for answers to our prayers, we may need to drop our pre-assumptions on how God's going to move and how we expect him to act so we can see what he's actually doing this is the hour to draw near to God. Further thought was, when was the last time God surprised you? I love this because <clears throat> it's so easy to control what we think is going to look like or how God's going to move. And I always say this, if you're believing for something to happen in your life, you can choose 11 ways. God's going to give you the 12th, right? He just works in ways we can't see. He's so much bigger than we are. And so today I want to seed you with that thought. He's going to do it in a way you might not have expected, right? He's going to answer in a way that we might not have realized. And so what I've learned over time is God is bigger than all of your thoughts. He's bigger than all the ways you think it's going to happen. If you need a financial miracle, you may have like the five ways you think you're making money and God brings in the six, you know, it's just the God we serve. And so today I'm going to tell you this, God is going to answer your prayer. He is going to answer the promises in your life that he's promised you but it might not come the way you think. And so, uh, you know, I just want us to live with an open mind and an open thought of what God can do and just believe that no matter what, he's bigger, far bigger than anything that we could ever ask, hope, or imagine. So that's the thought today. I'm gonna pass it over to our dear friends, Rob and Lori Evans to add to this, but listen, don't limit God. He's going to come through. And I promise you the prayers and promises will be answered. We love you guys. I'll be there next week with all of you, with all the cast and crew. Love you guys much from freezing New York City. Good thing we'll be there tonight in warm weather. We love you guys. Be blessed. I love that. Freezing he's, he's New freezing. York City. Did you notice though he's wearing a short sleeve shirt? Well, he's indoors, but yeah, he had his he, hat with it. So I know. Anyway. I think that's amazing. You know, I love this devotion because it really is all about trusting God. Every single day is about trusting God. Yes, He hears our prayers. Yes, He answers our prayers. And I think the most important thing is to look for the goodness of God. I mean, yes, we might want Him to answer things the way we want them, but He wants to answer our prayers for what He knows best for us. Sometimes we think we know what's best for us and He knows better. So it is about trusting Him. It's about seeing the goodness of God and seeing how he's answering. And then knowing that when he answers a prayer, how we didn't expect, that's what I've had people say, oh, I'm so upset, God, you know, the door got closed. 
be happy right. when God closes a door because when he closes a door, it's because he knows better than we do. And it is about trust because he loves us and he's with us. So I, I think this is a beautiful devotion. Or he'll turn it around for good if the door is closed. Always. You know, accidents, always. things happen, but God can yes. always turn those always. around for good. So you can't focus so much on that problem that you get blinders on and you can't see what God can do and what he's going to do. Um, I mean, just get your Bible out and just start reading story after story after story. Um, I, I was, as we were talking about this, I was thinking of the walls of Jericho. Can mm -hmm. you imagine as a military force, we're going to try to conquer Jericho, but they have walls so thick and high that there's no way to penetrate them. There's no way to get around them. And what does the Lord say? Go ahead and march around them for seven days and then blow a trumpet. As a military, <laughs> you're thinking, what? Okay, yeah, great, God. That's like, that's going to work. And what happens? Of course, of course it works. it's going to work. Uh, so anyway, every miracle after miracle, you can't put God in a box. And you can't limit him and try to control it. I love Pastor said that. You can't control it. We, you know, we, we all like to control things. I want to control it. And it's going to happen this way and this way and this way financially. You know, I have all these plans that it's going to work this way. What does Jesus say? Go fishing. Pull the coin out of a fish's mouth. There's, you know, Peter was a fisherman. He fished all the time. I guarantee he probably never saw a coin in the mouth. But this one occasion, God wanted to show him, look, just have faith. Just trust me. I'm going to do something above and beyond you ever thought of. And that's how it's going to come to pass. Well, one of his promises is he has, he knows the plans he has for us. He made those plans for us, plans for good. So I think the one of the tech takeaways with this is just look for God and look for the goodness of God because it is always going to be the goodness of God. God is good. He loves you. Look for that and you'll see his answers. Yeah, and it may not be the way you expect it because if you're expecting it in the one or two ways you have, you might miss it. You could actually miss it because you're so focused on it's got to happen this way. Oh, I'm drowning and I know the Lord's going to save me. Well, 15 boats came by and you didn't get on any of them. The Lord said it was 15, but you were so focused on no, the Lord's going to pick me up and fly me home. So anyway, <laughs> don't miss the miracle. Don't be so focused and controlling that you miss it. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. We pray you have an amazing Thanksgiving. Yes. And we want to pray for you with 3 John 1, 2, beloved. I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. We love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.